Once again, a very warm welcome to yet another interactive session with eminent speakers and personalities from the world of passion, service, and commitment. We're honored to have with us today an extraordinaire in the field of culinary arts and a Padma Shri awardee, Mr. Sanjeev Kapoor. He is an alumnus of IHM Pusa, a celebrity chef, author of many best-selling cookbooks, and an entrepreneur. So has also been embraced as the Indian ambassador for the Clean Cook Stoves campaign under the United Nations and as food ambassador and as food ambassador for India for IFLP held under the Spanish government. Needless to mention, he was also the showrunner for Khana Khazana, a trot on Z channel that ran for 18 years, a record which is yet to be broken. He has been on the panel of judges for a very popular show, Master Chef and Chief Judge for Sanjeev Kapoor Ke Kitchen Khilari. We would now like to request Principal Sir, Mr. Kamal Khan Panth, to take over the session with Chef Sanjeev Kapoor. Over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to welcome uh, Padam Shri Chef Sanjeev Kapoor. We are proud that he is an alumnus of this August institution. I have had the double pleasure of being a shoe chef to chef in so many events, and I have got the fondest of memories of working in three of the best events, you know, under his leadership. If you remember 64th Golden Jubilee, Gandhi Maidan, Patna, 4,500 catering, and then Sangam Ashok at Tayagraj, catering to the Kumbh Mela devotees. And I think the last uh, time that I had the pleasure of working with you was the Commonwealth Foreign Ministry in Ashok in 1991, right? And then we were working on the same uh, event, you know, taking care of the break up tea sessions of uh, the foreign minister. So what a wonderful time it was. And what a, I've been uh, tracking uh, your journey since then. And I'm sure that all the students who are joining the IHM USA family, they too have a lot of curiosity to know, to learn about your journey. I am I'm, uh, aware that you were a wonderful student and before coming to PUSA, you had option to go and join one of the very good uh, engineering colleges. Your time, my time, class 12 marks, get you admission, got you admission into that. But what made you come to IHM PUSA Tell us about your time at PUSA and the time since PUSA. Chef. Thank you. Thank you, Kamal. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. And good morning, uh, all of you. Uh, what, what a uh, great uh, day for all of you. Uh, I'm sure that uh, this is very exciting because uh, any new profession, institution, new journey is uh, so exciting. And uh, uh, I, I, can, I can feel uh, that even after... Uh, I was just thinking this morning, uh, it was 39 years ago that uh, I had joined uh, Institute of Hotel Management, uh, PUSA, uh, 1981, and I passed out in 1984. And uh, uh, what, what a journey for me it has been. So welcome uh, to all the new students who are joining uh, the best uh, hotel management institute uh, that uh, this uh, country has ever uh, produced. And uh, that I say with full confidence because the number of people that it has produced, the professionals that it, it has produced in hospitality industry, no, no other institute has been able to uh, do that. And uh, I can tell you that I'm very lucky that I come from a batch, a batch of 1984, uh, which, which has uh, created such great uh, uh, leaders, uh, very dear friend, my batchmate, uh, who heads uh, the Taj group of hotels, the MD CEO, uh, Puneet uh, Chatwal, Mr. Puneet Chatwal, uh, and uh, Rajveer Singh, uh, many, many of our uh, batchmates. So I'm very happy uh, that uh, I'm uh, going back to the college. Uh, so thank you, Kamal, uh, and entire team of uh, IHM Pusa for uh, giving me this honor. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, I, of course, I have very fond memories of uh, working uh, with you. Uh, I, I have uh, some pictures. I think I, I shared also some pictures from Kumbh Mela Catering, which we didn't even know how many people we are catering. Uh, uh, we didn't even know how many zeros are there in 30 crores at that time. And that was the number that was 
uh, officially announced and he said, no, no, cannot be, then it was three crores. But even that 30 million people uh, congregating uh, at that time was crazy. Uh, so, uh, no, I have very fond uh, memories. Uh, and I can say that uh, for me to come to uh, Pusa was uh, something which I had not planned for, something that uh, just probably happened by uh, chance. And the chance was to take on something uh, which uh, uh, which was very different, uh, something which uh, uh, was fascinating. And good thing is that it continues to be fascinating, no matter what uh, the conditions are, no matter what uh, the environment is, no matter there is pandemic or not. So it continues to have that same charm. So any one of you uh, who is uh, thinking, oh my God, hospitality industry ko kya hoga, ye pandemic ho gaya, ye ho gaya. I can tell you, kahin likh ke rakh lo, pudhiya bana ke rakh lena uski. This is one college, one institute, which prepares you for life, not just a profession. So once you are ready for life, then what is the problem? Then you can do all the things, you can do anything. And that is uh, important. So uh, I would say that uh, I'm sure that uh, most of you are here for uh, three years uh, course. Uh, so uh, Mr. Pant was asking me that you have inspiration for them. I said, let's enjoy it, let's enjoy it, let's enjoy it. Uh, that is, uh, that enjoy karne do. And uh, I would say that uh, uh, jitne, uh, jitne masti kar sakte ho, karo. Be sincere. I think Hardik, you need to uh, put your, yeah, thank you. Uh, aap jitne um, masti kar sakte ho, uh, jitna maze kar sakte ho, zarur uh, kare. Uske saath mein, I would say all the boring things, jo bachpan se sunte aare na, uh, whether it's sincerity, whether it's punctuality, whether it's hard work, that is not only for uh, Pusa. And if you can follow that, I can tell you that you would succeed. And also, people go after uh, success uh, and uh, they think success ke liye prepare kaise hona hai. Mm, my quick uh, two words on that. Uh, don't prepare for success. Prepare for failure. When I say that, prepare for I'm failure. Uh, 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 so it happens me, when you have uh, Sanjeev Kapoor uh, speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that prepare for failure. Prepare for failure. What does it mean is that you are trying and you are trying harder. Uh, people who do not try, people who do not fail. Don't th think that uh, success comes uh, like this. Aise nahi aati hai. Success ke liye preparation lagti hai, success ke liye failure lagta hai. And be okay to fail, be ready to fail. Because a lot of people are failure, se, aur isle try nahi karte. Uh, I know that uh, today's uh, generation, uh, and, and I, have, uh, I have children uh, your uh, age and even uh, actually uh, older also. So I would say that उनको हमेशा लगता है कि लोग क्या सोचेंगे अगर हमने ठीक नहीं किया तो there's so much of pressure that what will others think I would say किसी दूसरे के बारे में मत सोचो अपने बारे में सोचो आपको कैसा लगेगा अगर आपको खराब लगेगा तो अगली बार अच्छा करेंगे और अच्छा करने के लिए मेहनत करनी पड़ती है रियाज करना पड़ता है प्रैक्टिस करनी पड़ती है एंड प्रैक्टिस करने में सक्सेस भी करते हैं फेल भी होते हैं and let me tell you, somebody like uh, Sachin Dindulkar, pure career mein, wo zada time out huye hai, not out, kam time rahe hai. So imagine, so out one of the failure, na? right? So Sachin Dindulkar, jitni maar khelte hai, zada baar out huye hai, not out to bhoat kam baar rahe hai. So be okay to fail. Come on. Wow. Wonderful. And the best part was, you know, likke rakh lo. And coming from you, it is so reassuring, Chef. Now, uh, you let the kids have fun. I do agree with you. But then you been a, you are the greatest chef that there is, and I've been a chef in my career. Like life is like a recipe, you know, and uh, fun may be like salt. So if you have too much of fun, like too much of salt would spoil a recipe. 
too much fun. The fun is very important along the way, and IHM Pusa is the place to have a lot of fun. But fun when it is time for fun and play hard, work hard. I think that is what uh, motto is. Going uh, forward, chef, we are seeing a lot of disruptions happening in the industry. The cloud kitchens are there. Takeaway revolution is taking place. Uh, the high end hot uh, institutions are joining the fray, doing outdoor catering and doing deliveries and things like that. How do you see uh, things unfolding? And how are those uh, developments going to create opportunities for the students who are joining the industry now? Sure. So uh, clearly, uh, it's a time for change. And this, this is uh, constant, change is constant. So the uh, time when we joined, 1982 was Asian Games in Delhi. And uh, there were nine large hotels uh, that were coming up. And uh, that also was a time of change. And that change was something uh, which prompted many people to join the industry and where everyone saw that as a, a possible uh, kind of a upside that it is are nine hotel or hotel, hotel management join karte hain, maze karte hain. Now, by the time we passed out, now 82 was a turning point, I would say, for uh, hotels in India. Uh, there were new hotels, tourism was uh, uh, picking up. But uh, that was 1982. 84, when we passed out, not everyone was hiring. Not everybody was. Uh, so one of the biggest uh, or uh, the chains that uh, was there, uh, uh, ITC, never came to uh, the Institute for the Management Training uh, Program. Uh, from uh, Oberoi's, we, we only had uh, them select uh, two people. Uh, I know I was one of them. So I, I know that it is, it is not that uh, this uh, kind of a situation, when you think that everything is good, would translate into uh, job creation uh, that much. So this will happen no matter what, no matter what. But each time there would be an opportunity that is presented. Now, I think good thing is that uh, uh, today there are many ways and means uh, where uh, younger generation can take their calls. Institutions are structure formed. They are not that agile. So here is one thing for uh, all the students who are joining. Don't follow the institute that much. You have a responsibility to take charge and make sure you become the institution, which means you need to learn to lead. For example, I don't know, let, let's say about eight years ago, when Airbnb started to come into play, became much bigger uh, than any hotel uh, company in the world. But I don't know, institutions, is there a subject also which looks after that, that if you were to create a business like Airbnb or a part of that, what kind of focus in three years uh, that's there? And this is something that was launched more than eight years ago. So I would say that institutions are not that agile. You can be agile. Individuals can be agile. Keep your ears and eyes open world is your oyster it is there are so many opportunities and with the digital world digital play i can tell you i can leave you with one thought that home as an opportunity so with airbnb we saw that very stay became a big uh, opportunity now home food is a bigger opportunity which this pandemic has taught us. It always existed. The out of home food consumption versus in home food consumption, in home has always been higher, always, right? But looking at institutions like PUSA, the focus at that is maybe, I'm not sure, I, I, I don't know, I, I don't uh, know the course material, I'm sure that it's being uh, looked at. But what I'm saying is that the agility that you can bring into an opportunity, don't wait for the opportunity that, oh, somebody will tell us, no, no, no. To lead, 
you have to take action yourself get out of inertia and be okay to fail and i'm repeating it be okay to fail and i can tell you that more you fail higher chances of success that are there that means you are sincere in doing something not just thinking because most people keep on thinking ab kya hoga kaise hoga kuch nahi i can tell you that in this pandemic uh, first two months were difficult for us but uh, post that most of our businesses have grown by 20% as compared to last year month on month why because we did not just ye ab kya hoga kaise hoga no we did not we acted on it and we worked on it while people were just uh, sitting ki situation theek hogi barish band hogi to bahar jayenge hum to chhata leke nikal gaye well <laughs> i am noting every word that you are speaking and i am sure that my students are doing the same chef what a wonderful insight uh, you are sharing with us today now chef uh, you are a big entrepreneur yourself you are consulting so many entrepreneurs coming up and i am sure that you are hiring loads of people for different kinds of business maybe there are certain shortcomings you feel in the people who are presenting themselves for the jobs i would like you to uh, share those shortcomings so that the students at the threshold of this industry they could prepare themselves they could cultivate themselves so that they are job ready even job ready or in a position to grab the opportunities to start their micro enterprises and everything upon graduation right over to you so i would say that nobody is uh, perfect uh, nobody is ever ready i am not you are not uh, yet we continue to do uh, work i think the biggest thing that is uh, needed and uh, that that is uh, for uh, all professionals is apart from what the institute uh, will teach you on all the knowledge and uh, skill the value system all the uh, boring things of life uh, they they are the things that uh, are more important as you uh, move up uh, in your life uh, they become more important so passion is uh, very important compassion is even more important hard work uh, is uh, important yet uh, at the same time you need to relax and enjoy because creativity does not come from stress it comes from a free mind so for excellence creativity is uh, important honesty hard work punctuality respect for others you are in hospitality industry atithi deva deva bhava this is the uh, core value of uh, indians i think all those things will make you a better person and a better person succeeds in long run so be a better person any person who is looking to hire they want people who are willing to learn willing to adopt willing to adapt and anyone who is who seems sincere in their approach because if people can be taught people will be hired if uh, if they think that uh, no we cannot work on this person so be be like a sponge when you present yourself be like a sponge and say that okay i'm absorbing uh, everything and i'm willing to do more i'm willing to do more whatever you want me to do i will do what you want and what this is what want. i would learn more that approach and attitude is seen with sincerity people uh, will hire because they cannot judge you just on uh, a few questions uh, that are there uh, but people can make out whether you are uh, sincere uh, or not you're on mute kamal ji very well and uh, we are uh, taking the good advice that you have shared with us today 
there is a constraint of the curriculum that we have, but whatever little opportunities we have to overstep that curriculum, we cannot take anything away. We cannot cut corners in the curriculum, but we can always go beyond the curriculum. And that is the mantra that we have been trying to follow at IHN. So we will try to do more of that. And uh, I'm sure, you know, you are a busy person. I had asked only for a few minutes. Uh, if there is, I'm looking at the chat boxes and some people are saying that shout out Dedo Chef, please. People have requests, you know, incredible requests, like please follow me back on Instagram and things like that. This is what uh, people, uh, makes people, you know, crazy when you can see their beloved celebrity sitting in front of them. So I would like to hand over to the uh, uh, MC if there are any questions that you want to pose to Chef. And then in the next uh, five minutes, as I had promised Chef that we will have to, uh, uh, you know, give him an option to log out. He has got a lot more things to take care of uh, besides this one today. But I can assure my students that uh, we will have opportunity to bring uh, Chef back to the institution. He's very kind. Let me not announce it today, but he's helping, guiding us and developing uh, our studio kitchen and so many other things. But uh, we will have a number of more opportunities. So any uh, questions you want to take up? One or two questions, not more than that, please. I, I think uh, these are, you know, incredible kind of uh, uh, responses that I see in the chat box. So therefore, uh, I think uh, we will uh, leave the questions for the next time. And uh, I would like to take uh, this uh, opportunity to thank you, Chef, for finding the time. And you are an inspiration to hundreds of people. And I'm sure, you know, these 300 plus students who are joining today, they will start following you now on. And that you are outside. And please continue the good work, the guidance that you have been extending to this institution. Looking forward to years and thank years you. of guidance. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Kamal. Thank you. To... Thank you very much. Uh, let me, uh, I, I've been seeing all the comments and uh, questions. Uh, uh, one uh, question, let me answer. Somebody asked, is luck a factor in uh, success? So let me answer uh, that. Uh, luck, actually, everyone, uh, Luck is uh, like a knock on the door. Luck is uh, like a knock uh, on the door. Uh, and uh, many people get that knock on the door from luck. There are some people who open the door when luck is uh, knocking. And that luck is in form of all the hard work that's uh, there. And when it knocks, again, wake up to open that door and start working uh, on it. Uh, and you will definitely get uh, lucky with a promise. Thank you very oh. much. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, enjoy. And uh, thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, sir. 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 Now, thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Going thank forward, you much, we have uh, Ms. Asha Patania who has uh, much, joined. Sir. It's a pleasure for me to welcome you, ma'am, to this induction orientation program of IHM Pusa. And may I request my colleague, uh, Ms. Manakshi Sumbli, to please uh, welcome her and engage her in a meaningful conversation. Uh, for the benefit of our uh, young students today. Madam Minakshi, and... Thank you so much, sir. Great to see sir. you again. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Welcome, ma'am. How are you? Thank you, Minakshi. I'm good. I hope you are also well. Yes, yes. Asta, ma'am. 
I address them. It has been rightly said that your attitude determines your altitude. And amongst us, we have a firm believer of the idea that attitude counts more than skills. I thereby welcome Ms. Asha Patania Ma, Assistant Vice President of Housekeeping, PVR Cinemas. As an experience in various spheres like hospitality, real estate, and now in multiplexes. Ma'am has been associated with prestigious brands like the Holiday Inn, the Roy, and the Living Tree Hotels, to name a few. We now humbly request Ms. Minakshi Sumbre, Ma'am, HOD Food Production at Jimpusa, to kindly take over the session with Ms. Asha Patania Ma'am. Right, I'll just get, give me a second, I'll give you a call. Give me a second, please. I'll just get back. Welcome, um, Asha ma'am. How are you? It's a pleasure for all of us to have you here and guide our students into the arena that is hospitality and more. When we are saying hospitality, of course, everyone just comes here, might be keeping in mind hotel management. But yes, you can always give that another aspect whereby they can get an idea, the broader vision as to what else is possible apart from hotels for them. Over sure. to you, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much. And a very good morning to all of you, dear students. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, part of such a wonderful uh, team and uh, an institute like yours. So first of all, my compliments and congratulations to all of you who have made it to IHM PUSA. I think you must have fought with a lot of other students who must be aspiring to be uh, part of uh, this institute, which is considered as the Mecca of uh, hotel management. And for you to be able to crack that and be a part of this team, I think life can only get better from here. So my congratulations and best wishes. Uh, so while I was given a time of uh, 11.40, 11 11.45 11 to join in as per my uh, participation. I uh, took the opportunity to join in a little early. Uh, coming from defense background, one can never be uh, too early. So I just thought, let me be there and just see that my video audio all is working. And I had uh, the brief opportunity of listening to the uh, very renowned Padmashri uh, chef, Sanjeev Kapoor. And now I actually feel that how many of you would actually be interested in listening to uh, somebody who is actually very much like you. So uh, my 27, 28 years of industry experience, and I still feel that I can relate to all of you. I still feel I'm a student. And there's so much which is happening around us, uh, which is there to learn and uh, imbibe. And uh, I would like to uh, hear, I cannot uh, do too much of a yarn or anything. Uh, I can share my uh, experiences with you, what is my understanding of the industry of hospitality and the role that I play. So just for uh, all of you that uh, why IHM Pusa uh, asked me, I can only tell you that yes, you can call me a veteran now because if you are more than 25 years in the industry, uh, you tend to know a bit about it, how it functions and how it runs. On top of that, I have been exposed very closely to two very critical departments of hotels. So I have started my career in uh, front office and I was in front office uh, for almost eight years before I switched over to housekeeping. So another uh, 10 years of uh, housekeeping uh, in hotels, eight years of front office and now I am uh, part of the India's biggest multiplex chain, PPR Cinemas. Uh, I don't know how many of you have visited uh, a PPR uh, in Delhi or any other city that you come from. Uh, but you know, I'm sure that for you people, uh, you could be wondering how hotels and multiplexes uh, make a sense. So I'll come to it a bit later. I'll tell you my learning and my uh, journey experience, which I had in these 25 plus years of my hospitality journey. So just to give you a little bit of an insight, the expert today that you see 
any expert that you see today and you are in awe of, you have to remember they also began somewhere. They were like you and me. So they were also full of doubts and uh, they were also looking at somebody to mentor them. And they found somebody or they believed in themselves or they learned from their mistakes. And today we like to call them experts. You don't have to be a great person to start, but you have to start to be great. So you have to start with something. I started in the year 1993 when I passed out from one of the IHMs uh, like uh, IHM Pusa. The good thing was that I was exposed to all four major departments like you could be and uh, the faculties there gave us enough time and opportunity to judge and find out what interested us the most. However, what is exceedingly good for you people is that there is so much happening on the internet, social media, and you have access to worldwide trends and global uh, leanings that what uh, is going to work for you. Hotel management as a course equipped with not just the skill of a front office or a housekeeping or a great cooking uh, skills of a chef or a great service professional, wines and cigarettes and so many more things that you could only see in movies. But it actually makes you a complete 360 degree professional who could join anywhere. And you would see that once you are ready, there would be a lot of industries who would come and pick you up. The airlines would be interested in you. The banking sectors could be interested in you. Uh, the airports could be interested in you. The facility companies who are getting uh, bigger and bigger every day will be interested to you as uh, government disinfect, uh, invest its stakes in airports and uh, other big corporates, uh, they are getting outsourced to very big corporate houses and those corporate houses actually go for those multinational facility agencies to up for their upkeep and maintenance. And uh, high-end uh, restaurants are coming up everywhere. You go to any mall, you go to any uh, airport, you go to even a decent metro station, you will find some very good international brands operating out of there. So that fear you should never have uh, what will happen to me if the hotels are not performing well? Hotels are the foundation of any good hospitality professional. And I personally feel whenever the time and opportunity come, you should always spend first three to five years learning the ropes of hospitality from a good branded hotel. Once you have maybe done that, you could explore outside and see uh, what is uh, it that interests you more? You want to start your own setup, you want to do your own business, you want to do your own uh, facility agency, you want to start your restaurant or you want to do uh, those online uh, things where you uh, distribute food, uh, those uh, ghost kitchens kind of a stuff. So much can be done. But if your fundamentals are not right, if you're in a hurry to earn money, if you're not willing to put efforts to learn how the industry works, I don't advise that you should immediately start something uh, where you don't know the future. It's important. It's very, very important uh, that you uh, learn at the expense of somebody else. Hotels will teach you and pay you. <laughs> or let's say any good other hospitality uh, vertical. Uh, it's not restricted to hotels anymore. Uh, but yes, if you have a family business, then also it is recommended that you go to a good, decent place, learn the ropes, Fundamentals are fit, and then uh, you can try something. And uh, another thing which is very, very important to uh, know in your first year, always be willing to learn. Always be willing to accept what your uh, other people are saying. Because, you know, in today's time, there's no one absolute truth. There's nothing unidimensional anymore. Everything is multidimensional. There are always multiple sides to any fact. Uh, your books are uh, there, I'm sure. I think most of us have studied the same books, the Lily Crap and the uh, Aurora's and uh, Dr. Sudhir Andrews. They're all fantastic, fantabulous. Do not write them off. You may feel this does not happen anymore. This does not get followed. But I can assure you, the wisdom of those truths, of those books, still holds to true. Because those books were written when technology was not there. So God forbid, if somewhere the technology was to fail, you would still have your fundamentals right. So those books 
you got to read you have to understand keep yourself updated you have the advantage of what is happening in other institutes what is happening internationally keep a tab on the trends keep a tab on the trends uh, on uh, internationally what is the skill needed if you want to be a chef it's no more about your uh, skills of uh, how well you cook it's your skill about how well you understand the menu engineering how well you understand your cost how well can you control your food cost how can you arrive at a food cost so when you do these kind of things you know leadership interpersonal skills behavior discipline integrity hard work the fundamentals of life will never change whichever era of technology you live in a great communication skill showing up on time and i'm borrowing from uh, chef kapoor when he says do not get disheartened if the first time you don't succeed do not worry about what your friends are doing or if everybody is doing this i should also do that that sounds safe no L learn to live your dream what you want to do in life do not chase other person's dream what works for one person may not work for you you should have your own goals how much smaller they look in comparison to other people and follow them sincerely and you will be able to make a name for yourself not the first time not the second time but you have enough examples around you people who have succeeded in life have failed not once not twice many times over but have faith in yourself and it is very good uh, of your institute to uh, you know allow you to uh, be exposed to industry uh, leaders you could uh, always reach out for any clarification on the industry that you want to know more about any department that you want to learn more about uh, what you start uh, in first year your interest could change in, uh, by the time you uh, get exposed to the industry exposure and by third year you say no not this that it's perfectly all right to have doubts perfectly all right it's only natural and normal bilkul isme koi sharam ki baat nahi hai isme koi ghabrane ki baat nahi hai follow what you believe in there are enough opportunities happening in every department no department is superior to another the return on investment or in terms of what is your earning going to be is how hard you are willing to work how much you are willing to challenge yourself how much are you ready to risk so my advice to all of you here is it's a great industry that you have chosen to be there are countries uh, like uh, thailand and china and all a lot of countries whose economy run on this there are people whose uh, employment this is one of the highest employment generator so don't have any fears we've had some bad uh, months and uh, years in the past but this is one industry which hits gets hits the hardest but bounces back the fastest and we have uh, young uh, kids like you who are going to be joining the workforce and joining this industry we have only good things to look forward to so i uh, i feel that there is a uh, Uh, i could uh, answer you or your queries that you have uh, with uh, in regards to housekeeping industry or in uh, regards to any industry i will try and answer to the best of my ability uh, over to you manaj yes thank you uh, now we can have the questions in, from any of the people those who are the audience today in case you have any questions please put that into the chat box so that we can put forward it to acha ma'am Ma'am, there's a question that is, how much does our first job affect our career? So those who have fallen in love the first time, the first job stays with you. <laughs> It's like falling in love. So you know, uh, we and I can assure you, when you're going through the rigor and the the ragda that you call, जैसे first year का ragging होता है, the first job is also like that. uh where a lot is expected but never go with a mindset to say i know it all mm -hmm. just because uh, we scored very well in our exams and we uh, were one of the toppers i had this uh, very wrong attitude about myself that i knew all and the first week i knew that you know i have to begin everything all over again the first job 
I may, oh, I think in a very good way where people get to know each other in a nice yeah. way, uh, not in those uh, horrible stories that you hear. What I meant was, uh, <laughs> what I meant was that first job will actually uh, let you know what your skills are, what are your strengths in that area, and what are your areas of improvement. And it will stay with you because whenever I look back, I always go that what happened when I have to train and teach somebody. I actually see my initial months. That what was my fear? What was my uncertainty? And how scared I was to ask the question when somebody asked me a job, I did not even, uh, you know, had the courage to ask my doubts again. So things have changed. You know, you guys are like uh, many generations ahead of us. Uh, the first job will definitely decide where you want to be in your life. It will be very, very important. Uh, do we have any other questions? There are a lot of questions on the chat box. Uh, Ma'am, uh, what I... question that I can always, yes, there are, there are huh. a good amount of questions. Huh. Uh, Ma'am, can you uh, tell us about your journey for after the BSc that you had? A slight idea about it. Huh. So I was one of those students who got the opportunity to represent my institute as uh, in all rounders. And I uh, competed and we lifted the runners of P for f &B service. And that was my area of interest till third year. And uh, then I realized that uh, the growth opportunities uh, in FNB for a women at that time uh, wasn't so great. I, I think I just got swayed. And, uh, I don't know if I would have pursued FNB service where I would be. Uh, but I chose to join front office and I was picked up by a Taj Hotel in my campus. I was a topper for all three years uh, of my batch. And let me tell you, that doesn't help. It really doesn't help because uh, uh, the real life is very different. It's not about uh, uh, scoring very well. So you could, uh, you know, work hard and uh, know everything what is there in your book. And you will get stumped by how people behave. See, books and institute gives us an ideal situation, but the real world is very different. Sometimes, and you know, it's very important to find a good mentor. Good mentor who pushes you to do your best. So I spent eight years in front office. It was exceedingly hard uh, to work 16 hours. But you know, our generation, we have never really complained about long hours. We have worked very hard. And uh, whichever department you choose, I can tell you, you have to work hard without exception. Don't think front office may sab achche se khade rehte, AC mein khade rehte. You can sweat under an AC when the situation goes out of control for no fault of yours. So every department exactly. will have a, a demands on you and be ready for everything and anything. Your institute will gear you up with all the skills. Don't worry. There's a small question from one of the students, ma'am, asking for the names of the books that you had mentioned while you were uh, giving out this. So I was sharing the books that I read. So there was K. Aroda, uh, which I used. Uh, I think K. Aroda was for food production. Krishna Aroda, okay. that's right. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> first, first year. And then these are uh, Lily Crab books, uh, first year, second year, third year. They're ex exceedingly beautiful books. And there were so many books on wines and, uh, you know, those uh, how you make champagnes and port and different between port and sherry and the different napkin folds, the banquet setups. And uh, then there are uh, Dr. Sudhir and Hughes books were very good for uh, front office. So your your curriculum books will also have those. Your library, I'm sure, e-libraries are available. Yeah, sure, we have those, ma'am. Oh, I'm sure because I'm... You know, I'm talking about 1990. I used to be in love books. with those books. I used to love them. I still have my journals. Yes, my I think every, all the people, those who have uh, really loved their journey and the experiences that they had while they were doing the hotel management or the jobs that were associated to the hotels, everyone, uh, especially me, uh, talking about me or my other colleagues that we have been having a word. Lots of people have their journals with them because uh, journalists actually telling them the experiences that they had. The journalists telling them the amount of the hard work that they have put. And I hope our students, those who are listening today also, are understanding that a journal is nothing that uh, for a flick of a minute you write a journal overnight and that will help you. No, it will never. So it is a Taylor Swift singing that, uh, you know, they never go out of style. 
journals will always Very stay. Rare. We always Actually, stay inside. journal is something uh, i'll always second your thought that journal is something which talks about a personality it uh, in one glance you get an idea what the student is all about so this is i can always second your words here journal is the face of the student without looking at the student also you get an idea what the student is all about yes the index and how well you organize it Yes. Uh, gives you uh, how well you will do in your industry the subject yeah. i also yeah. want to just say one thing whatever your area of interest must be till the time you have the opportunity to learn please learn all the subjects they complement each other as you grow in your role see as a housekeeper i need to know all my numbers i need to understand the business of uh, the revenue so i cannot say i'm a housekeeper i don't know uh, how much manpower is needed what is my cost what is going to be the forecast so when you grow in your role you have to learn how the business works so please even if you're interested being a chef or you want to be a housekeeper you want to be in service it's very important that you pay attention to how the hotel works if you have a good understanding of different departments you are going to have an edge over everybody else who says i am a master of housekeeping uh, but i do not know how to speak because i am scared of public speaking or i cannot train my people or i cannot do my numbers i cannot do my costing if you are a chef and you don't know how to take out your cost or bake a good menu or uh, you don't know how to design a kitchen then where are you going to grow so see all your curriculum has everything whether you like it you don't like it every subject today is important and this we got to know very late in our lives and we had to really go back to our journals and read it all over again so don't do that nobody told us no we never had people like us telling us this the uh, yes. institute is very good they tell you <laughs> all so, subjects are important yes in fact uh, i think the students are, are having a good amount of questions but if we start off with the question answer session it will be taking another one hour time and actually so, i can uh, you can give my email id if anybody wants to reach out later sure. i can always uh, yes. uh, be very very happy to help any youngster uh, any time so nice of you from for taking out that precious time of yours and to give a briefing about what this hospitality world is all about apart from hotels thank you thank you so thank much you. Thank, thank you thank you everyone thank you uh, ma'am and thank you to principal sir thank and you thank so you much. all the students for having the patience to listen to me and i loved in the this interaction we loved it sure. we loved it thank you thank you for thank finding you. the time ma'am and i think uh, mr sherwani is there in uh, audience uh, could okay. we bring him uh, over and uh, introduce him now please yes sir please uh and hello thank you asha ma'am that all charmed by the reflective knowledge you share another success story which happens to belong of, to someone from our very own institute is that of mr saeed sherwani from batch of 82 ihm pusa who we feel delighted to have amit sir he has held several important positions at prestigious organizations such as that of vice president national restaurant association of india and former president of federation of hotel and restaurant association of india besides these so also holds the title of managing director at shivani hotels and is the owner owner of rodeo restaurants I would now request Ms. Nimisha State Ma'am, HOD FMB I Jampusa, to take over the session ahead with, with Sayid Sir. Asta, there is an important uh, title which goes with Mr. Sherwani. He is an honourable member of the Board of Governors of I Jampusa. Thank you. He may, adds a lot of value to. Welcome, Mr. Sherwani, and please carry Thank on. Thank you. Can you can you hear me? Yes, Mr. Sherwani. Yes. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon to everybody, and especially to the young men and women who are starting their uh, journey from IHM Pusa. Uh, I'm sir. also very grateful to Mr. Pant and the college for having invited me to speak today, 
because it brought back the memories of 1979, where many of you were not, most of you were not, and all of you, in fact, were not born when uh, I entered the gates of IHM Pusa. Uh, 79 is a long, long way back. And there were only four institutes of hotel management at that time. Now you have so many private come the IHMs all over India. Uh, a little history I would like to give you about your institute that when it was established in the 60s, 1960s, it was established as an institute of nutrition. Hospitality management, hospitality education was not even in the horizon of those who established uh, this institute. Uh, when we got independence in 1947, the year following 1948, all India, we had two lakh something graduates, two lakh 20,000 graduates. In the last uh, year, 2019, 680 lakh students finished their graduation in India. So from two lakh in 1948 to 680 lakh in the year 2019, is indeed a long journey. And as I say this, I would also like you to know, five times that number are still uneducated. That's how large a country are. So when I entered Pusa in 79, I struggled with my parents, with my father who was a businessman in his own right, who thought I was going to become a cook or a waiter. I don't know if in 2020 that is being told or looked at in some circles, 79, that if that's what it was, okay, are you going to become a waiter? Are you wanting to become a cook? Why are you doing hotel management? That concept. Some of my best years were passed in those three years in Pusa. And today uh, I'm very grateful for IHM Pusa for having gone there because my life to a large degree has been shaped by what I learned in IHM Pusa. I'm sure and I pray that you are soon back into the campus because campus life is very, very important other than the learning, the theoretical learning, which I believe you're going to start online because of COVID. I pray that everybody is able to get back to the Institute. You still have three years. So I'm okay. sure that in those three years, you will be back. You will get to know each other because remember, theoretical learning is definitely important and it ticks a box, especially in today's time with so many people getting educated getting degrees and when those who interview you will look at you uh, as to what background what kind of education you have achieved and where you have come from all of you who have got admission in ihm pusa should be proud of the fact that who's who of the hotel industry are alumni of your institute believe me when i don't exaggerate when i say that you are in the saint stephens of hospitality education that's how important IHM Pusa is. It's the leading institute of hotel management studies in the country. For all of you who have managed an admission in IHM Pusa should really look forward to a great hospitality career. Coming to the practicality of things, hospitality has always been a people's profession. You cannot be a great hospitality manager if you don't like people. If you don't socialize, if you're not an extrovert, other than your theoretical knowledge, where you will see in your three years that practicals and internship is given due uh, importance, it is very important practical knowledge. Uh, when you do your three years of PUSA, you become a jack of all trades and maybe master of none. But today in the days of specialization, as you go forward, you decide whether you want to be in the production you want to be in the service or you want to be in the back office and or you want to be in a totally different as the speaker before me informed you about uh, airlines informed you about real estate event management public relations all these are people's career where you interact with people where you like people you deal with people yes all of us have been under a lockdown for the last six seven months and our interactions with many of our friends uh relatives has been the minimum but i'm sure that this is going to get over soon uh you are lucky that you have three years of your college education so by the time you pass out things are going to be back into normal as before covid 
So you are lucky that you have your three years. Spend it together. Have a great time. And do not forget to enjoy yourself. Do not be very serious in life because life passes by very fast. As it is important to do your studies and get the good marks, believe me, there are many stories of those who stay behind in class who are also successful. So therefore, I'm not at all telling you not to study hard, not to put your best foot forward. But what I'm telling you is not to take yourself so seriously that if you have failures, you feel that your life is going to take a back seat. It will not. Life is about choices. You have made a choice. Go ahead. Give it what you have. Enjoy your three years. These three years will not come back. You welcome to the PUSA alumni family. Once you pass out, join your PUSA association. All the old boys there, old girls are there to help you. And when you tell them that you're from IHM PUSA, you belong to a very, very large and successful family. So God bless you all. If there are any questions, I would be more than happy to take them. And I wish you that all of you are back into the PUSA campus sooner than all of us can think. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, this is Nivisha. Uh, I'm really grateful for the for taking out so much time for us today from your very busy schedule. And uh, also for the kind words of wisdom and encouragement uh, that have been put. I just have a small query, sir. Rodeo is known to have uh, brought in Mexican and Tex-Mex cuisine to Delhi as early as 1994. So what led you to conceptualize the rodeo, especially at a time when probably the cuisine was unknown to most people? Well, uh, once I passed out from Pusa, I, uh, I had this property in, uh, my parents had this property in Nenital. And uh, uh, my father, unfortunately, expired when I was in the second year of college. My plans were to go abroad to do masters and to uh, further studies. But because of the, uh, I was only 20 years old when my father expired in 1981. So when I passed out in 82, my mother told me that this is a property in Nainital we want to sell because we have a lot of happy memories of a holiday home, which we had our parents used to go there. And now your father is no longer there, so I want to sell it. I told her, don't sell it. Let me run it as a hotel because it's in the hill stations. And I, with two college friends, all three of us had just passed out class of 82. Three of us rushed to the hills and we ran a 12-room hotel for two months, one and just after finishing our final year. We made a lot of mistakes, of course. We were not ready, uh, did not have much practical uh, uh, knowledge. We had theoretical knowledge, but we managed to uh, uh, hold ourselves and have fun. That's the important thing while running that hotel. Of course, today it's a 48 room uh, boutique resort in Anital. And uh, over the years, we have managed to improve a lot of it and professionalize it. Once I came back to Delhi, because it was seasonal at that time, I had, this was a property that uh, was with Thai Airways and they were vacating it. It belonged to my elders in the family, my brothers, and I went to them and I said, please don't sell it. Let me run it as a restaurant. And they said, Ki, all right, but what restaurant would you like to run? And I said, I would like to open it as a pub because there was no pubs, no bars in, in Delhi in restaurants. They were only in five-star hotels. Uh, tourism Financial Corporation had been established. They gave me a loan. And I started, when I came to the decor, I wanted to do it uh, like a cowboy place because uh, we grew up, when we were teenagers, seeing a lot of Clint Eastwood. I don't know if many of you would uh, remember him. He was a star of yesteryears. Uh, of cowboy movies, this was the Hollywood movies. And, you know, I always thought that a pub or a bar should be a place which has swinging doors, saddles as bar stools. You walk in, uh, waiters and bartenders wearing steps and hats. And that was the concept that I looked at and I got hold of a interior decorator and we managed to get this thing done. Uh, once we opened, we got the decor in place we were deciding what food to serve in this restaurant. And, uh, you know, sometimes luck plays a very important part. And uh, one of my friends, he said, I want to come and see what you're doing with your restaurant. And I 
the decor was 90% complete. I brought him to the restaurant and he said, wow, this is like a cowboy, this, that. He said, yeah. He said, why don't you serve cowboy food? I said, what is cowboy food? They only eat beans. He says, no, it's Tex-Mex food. I said, what is Tex-Mex food? And uh, he said, all right, I will bring you, I will introduce you to my wife. She's a Mexican who has lived in America and she will tell you about it. I went all over to meet her. We sat down and we discussed the food and she gave us three or four dishes. I told her, come into the kitchen and help us teach my chefs. And she came in, we sourced the ingredients first from within India, then from Dubai, because it was not possible to get all ingredients in India. And we started this restaurant. In the beginning of the year, I realized that only three dishes were Tex-Mex and they were selling 80%. And uh, the clientele had taken to it and there used to be one hour waiting and people would uh, phone up, use all the sauces to get into the restaurant. So I realized that I had to expand this menu. And therefore I was, again, as one says, luck plays a part. Two people came to my restaurant and they were foreigners. And I asked them, uh, where are they from? And they said they are Mexicans and they lived in America and they worked on ships. I said, what do you work as? They said, as chefs. I said, wow, this is, I said, would you like to help me be a consultant? because we want to expand the menu bank of a Mexican restaurant. And they looked at each other and they said, all right. So we struck a deal and they came for two, three hours in the kitchen and they taught us such a lot in those two months that we then had a menu bank of over 50 dishes, which were Tex-Mex and Mexican dishes. And they also taught me how Mexican food is different from Tex-Mex food. And uh, as I said, it became a hit restaurant ran for 25, 30 years. Unfortunately, after rodeo, after COVID, we have, after 25 years, shut it down for the moment. We are looking at doing some different things. My son has uh, also joined me in my business. He wants to believe that once you have crossed 60, it is the life of those in 25 and 30 years that matters more. And it's their world. So it's your world of tomorrow. You need to decide what you want to do with your lives and you should be given a full chance. And the older people should not hold on to the businesses, but give the young because the young are much more learned, much more experienced than we were when we were your age. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, there is one uh, small uh, request from, one, from the students. They said, could you share some unwrapped moments of your college life? Oh, <laughs> I'm sure this is not a student. It could be somebody who was there when I was there. Why? Uh, 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 okay. Let me tell you. Uh, one of the beautiful things the speaker told, told you was about uh, uh, you know, first job is like once I met a new love. The problem was it was so beautiful, so nice, the classmates and the girls, that it was very difficult to focus your attention on one. They have taught me a lot. And when I say what? I came from all boys' school. I came as a chauvinist pig into Pusa Institute, thinking that we are macho men. Uh, you know, we are superior than the women. And suddenly the girls of Pusa taught me that not only are they stronger uh, in their mind, uh, they're not only stronger in their abilities and their talent, they're better and many of them were. Uh, they are absolutely equal to all the men in all respects. So all the girls there, the hotel industry is one industry that respects you, that appreciates your talent, and that gives that equality between men and women at a workplace where uh, I'm sure you're bound to succeed. Another thing I want to unwrap, which is, you know, PUSA was under the agriculture ministry when we joined. And uh, a lot of our teachers at that time were unhappy that the curriculum was not getting the attention that the tourism and hospitality institute would get. Because as I told you, it was established as an agriculture institute and uh, a nutritious institute, 
but 99% of the passed out students were being absorbed by the hospitality. Therefore, uh, we asked representatives, we had a meeting, and the teachers also backed us, let me tell you that, some of them. And uh, we asked for a transfer of this institute from agriculture to tourism. Now, like it happens in the government of India, no ministry wants to give up its assets. And the agriculture ministry was very upset that this lovely the Ministry of Agriculture and put into the Ministry of Tourism. So they resisted it. We had to take out a procession march to India Gate, wearing our chef's uniforms, our waiter's uniforms out, out there. We led, that was the first time that a march of two, 300 students went into India Gate, demanding the transfer of your IHM PUSA from Agriculture Ministry to Tourism Ministry. Uh, at that time, it used to be Congress rule, and Rajiv Gandhi was the young general secretary of the Congress party. And we went to meet him. And at that time, there used to be many people, all politicians wanting to meet uh, various politicians, as it happens today. And everybody used to wear the Khaddar Kutta pajama. We went in a delegation of 78 students. All of us wore suits and ties, and the girls with us wore saris. When Rajiv Gandhi, the late Rajiv Gandhi, saw that among all these Khaddar, there are these young boys and girls wearing suits and saris, he came first to us. And he said, where are you people from? And we said, we are from IHM Pusa, sir. And he says, what are you, you come here for? I said, sir, we are a hotel management institute and we are under the agriculture ministry. And we have been trying for months to get someone to listen to us and transfer to the ministry because there we will get better, we feel better looked after. There will be people who understand the tourism business and our costs, our curriculum will be changed, etc. And he looked at us, he says, IHM Pusa, yes. Why are you under the agriculture ministry? We said, we don't know. He said, that seems a reasonable demand. He said, sir, we are on a strike because of that. He said, no, 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 that is wrong. You should not be on a strike. Please go back to your classes. I will look into it and we will do the best. And uh, we went back. We called off the strike. We said we have been assured by Rajiv Gandhi. And we went back into the institute to attend our classes. And within three months, this institute was transferred from Ministry of Tourism, uh, sorry, Ministry of Agriculture to Ministry of Tourism. There is something that I would like to tell you, uh, which I've unwrapped. Probably nobody will <laughs> tell you in college, but uh, that is what happened. So I hope uh, I've been able to entertain you and tell you a little bit of history of your college. Thank you. So on behalf of the institute, and myself, uh, I would like to thank you once again for taking out time from your extremely you. busy schedule to be with us here today. And I would like to visit the college once uh, the students are back there. All these uh, people are there in the institute, hopefully soon. I would like to come back. Definitely, sir. Talk to them. All the best yes, to all of you.